Praise God. Amen. Don't announcements kill the atmosphere, eh? Praise God. Amen. Praise God. I feel like inviting that group back, right? Amen. Let's stand. Amen. Oh. Praise God. We're excited about the Lord. Amen. 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 Praise God. If, if you open up your Bibles with me uh, to the book of Daniel, amen, chapter 1. Now I'm just going to read one verse, but I'm going to use uh, uh, several chapters and uh, as the Lord uh, inspires me, I'm... So if you keep your Bible open, amen, praise God. We believe God speaks through the text, amen? Amen. amen. Man, the Lord is good. Yes. Daniel chapter 1, and I'm just going to use as a, amen, point of departure, chap, verse 3, praise God. And it reads, Tell them to bring some of the children of Israel and some of the king's descendants and some of the nobles, young men in whom there is no blemish, but good-looking, gifted in all wisdom, possessing knowledge, and quick to understand who have the ability to serve in the king's palace and whom they might teach the language and the science of the Babylonians. And, and the king appointed them for a daily provision of the king's delicacies and of the wine which he drank and three years of training for them so at the end of that time they may serve before the king. Father, we come before thy presence uh, tonight and we just exalt your name. We lift up the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, you've promised us that if we lift you up, that if we lift you up, you would draw all persons. So Lord, we unapologetically lift up the name of Jesus Christ. We say, bless the Lord, all oh, my soul, and bless all that is within me, bless his holy name. We say as a people, hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. We just praise you and, and magnify you and, and just give you the glory and the honor. And we pray that you may have a tonight for us as your people, O oh Lord, a, a special word, Lord. Oh, Lord, that, that, that in some way with all of the rhetoric and, and possible cliches that, that, that I'll expound on, that, Lord, that, that everyone here may have one holy moment, Lord. What, one phrase, one sentence, something that connects with their inner person, Lord. Lord, in the name of Jesus, minister to the needs. You know the struggle of the people. Lord, you know their concrete issues, Lord, that, that, that face them as they do a holistic ministry all around this country. Minister to them in a, in a very special way. Oh, Lord, we, we pray that, that you may help us and give us knowledge and revelation, Lord, uh, oh Lord, that you may give us the spirit of knowledge and of, and of revelation in your Son, Lord. Oh, reveal to us in a very special way your will for our lives. We're going to give you the glory and, and we're going to give you the honor and we're going to lift you up, Lord, for we pray in the name of Jesus, amen and amen. Praise God. You may be seated. I'm going to speak to you on a theme that I've been speaking on uh, for over uh, 30 years, and that's uh, doing ministry in a situation of captivity. And it's just uh, lessons that we derive from the different situations of captivity that the people of God uh, found themselves in, in the Old and, uh, and even in the New Testament. And I'm going to uh, 
try to uh, share with you uh, what I think is the challenge of doing ministry in a situation of captivity. Uh, there's always been a, a tension between the interrelationship between the body of Christ and institutional Christianity. How those work themselves out in a, in a very concrete situation. How that duality takes place, body of Christ, institutional Christianity. But such is, is the history of dualities, uh, of cr creator and creature, history and revelation, Israel and the nations, Christ and culture, those attentions in scripture uh, that are always uh, or quite never put to rest. And they are meant to, uh, to, to challenge us. And there's always uh, that creative tension, but uh, we, we pray to the Lord. We resist the temptation of, re of, of reducing them uh, to the area of the mystical. Say amen. We, we, we reduce the temptation of making them as abstract, of making them uh, relative. We know that these dualities, that these tensions are to be resolved within God's redemptive plan in history. If you believe this, raise your hand and say praise the Lord. So as we face these tensions, and, and, and as we look at, at, at how they resolve themselves in, in a situation of captivity, I want to just uh, uh, take you uh, to the book of Daniel, and, and, and we know the situation of captivity there. We, we, we know the story, and, and, and the book opens up, and in typical historical uh, oppressive uh, methodology, uh, I want to say today, uh, or tonight humbly, but unequivocally, that the oppressor is not that creative. Uh, his, his oppressive uh, methodologies don't change much. Uh, and, and here, as the book opens up, you see his classical uh, oppressive methodology. He says, let's take the young men in the science, and then I add women among them. Let's take the brightest. Let's take uh, uh, the most articulate. Let's take those uh, that possess knowledge and wisdom. Let's take the good-looking ones. Some of us wouldn't qualify. Uh, uh, and, and let's take them. And then uh, let's take that class. And then let's, after we take them, let's educate them and the language of the Babylonians. Let's give them the tools of the empire. Let's acculturate them. Let's assimilate them. Let's, let's, let's submerge them in, 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 in the tools of the empire. Let, let's give them access to the palace. Let's give them access to power. Let's open up the doors for them wide so, so, so they can really fit in and become part of the dominant culture. Praise God. Let's disconnect them from their history. Let's disconnect them from their traditions. Let's disconnect them from their culture. Let's give them new names. Let's give them a new religion. Let, let's divorce them from their historical past and the greatness of their people. Praise God. Praise God. And let's do this. Let's prepare an elite. Praise God. Let's let them live in the house. Come on now, say amen. Amen. Let's give them access to the house. Let's give them access to the palace. Let's give them access to power. Praise God. Amen. And you know, let's teach them the language and the science of the Babylonians. Let's give them the tools of the empire. Let's teach them how to navigate the empire. Now don't get me wrong, people. There's nothing wrong with upward mobility. 
There's nothing intrinsically sinful with moving on up. Amen. Praise God. There's nothing intrinsically sinful with becoming part of the dominant culture. There's nothing sinful with having access to power. Amen. So Daniel, three Hebrew children in a situation of captivity, said, okay, we're going to take the tools of the empire. We're going to try to master them. As people in exile in a strange land, we're going to learn them better than you know them yourself. Raise your hand and say, praise the Lord. We're going to use those tools. We're going to master them. Praise God. But you know what? We don't want your diet. We'll take the tools, but not the diet. Amen. I'll say more about that later. What that represents metaphorically, symbolically. We'll take the tools, but not the diet. And you know what? We've made a decision not to contaminate ourselves. We've made a decision to stand firm and connected to who we are. Praise God. So give us 10 days, amen? Praise God. Turn to the person next to you and say, give us 10 days. Amen. We need some time to think about this, yes? Some of us one day offer an opportunity into the palace. We're there in 10 minutes flat. Amen. We just, we're, we're, we're anxious to jump right in and, su and submerge ourselves in palace life. Amen. But give us 10 days. Amen. I need to figure out a plan. Say amen. I need, I need to figure out a strategy. Amen. And, and we're going to refuse your diet, but check us out at the end of 10 days. I can't forget my tradition. Praise God. This conference is about tradition. Say amen. There's nothing wrong with tradition. Amen. There's nothing wrong with tradition. And as long as it doesn't become dead traditionalism. Amen. But there are some traditions that are good. We, we can't forget our culture. We can't forget the revelation of God in our history. We can't do that. Amen. Praise God. You know, and you know the story. At the end of 10 days, uh, read it. It says the king interviewed them. And in all matters of wisdom and understanding about which the king examined them, he found them ten times better than all the other magicians and astrologers who were in the realm. I, I still believe as part of my Pentecostal evangelical tradition, I, I still believe that when we go to God, we serve a God that answers. If you believe this, raise your hand and say, Hallelujah! Praise God. Amen. Amen. Our tradition is rooted in religion with revelation. Amen. Our religion has revelation. Our religion is about a God that speaks, unfolds himself, reveals himself to us. There's a distinction about what we believe. Amen. They uh, made an impact. They were part of the king's court with all the other astrologers and all the other religions. I guess we could call it, Brother John, religious, old-time religious ecumenism. Because there were Daniel and the Hebrew children and all the other religions and all the other uh, uh, pagan beliefs. They were there in the court and they were right there with them. You know, I, I, 
have to believe that here God had told them that in Abraham all nations would be blessed. He told them to share the revelation of God, but they didn't do it. Praise God. Israel developed spiritual arrogance. Israel developed spiritual su superiority. What they didn't do in freedom, they had to do in captivity. Sometimes when we don't obey God in freedom, he puts us in a situation of captivity where we have to share what he has given us. Praise God. Praise God. Tell the person next to you, sometimes what you don't do in freedom, you'll do in captivity. Amen. Amen. There they were sharing, sharing in the religious court, sharing the revelation, dialoguing with other faiths, dialoguing with other traditions, dialoguing with other people. Amen. Chapter 2, the, the king had a dream and, and it says that he was restless. He couldn't understand it. Uh, he was so restless that uh, it, it, it almost created uh, an obsession with him uh, that, that, that it motivated him to bring all the musicians in and the astrologers in. This restlessness, amen. The, he, he couldn't understand uh, the dream. He couldn't understand what it meant. He knew it meant something, but he couldn't understand it. There was a restlessness in Babylon. I don't know about you, but there's a restlessness in the land. There's a restlessness in the land. People can't understand uh, the systems, the structures of power, can't understand uh, the, the, the restlessness. Amen. They're seeking answers. Amen. And they summon the court. And you know the story. He asked them to reveal the dream. I, I think William Maxwell would have had a good time there. With, with his models of leadership because of, of the king says, I want you to reveal the dream. Amen. And they said, well, tell us the dream. And you know what the king said? I'm not going to reveal the dream because you're going to what? You're going to lie to me. That, what a model of leadership, right? He didn't even trust his subordinates. Say amen. That, that's the world's model of leadership, rooted in mistrust, rooted in backbiting, rooted in cheating, uh, rooted in distortion, rooted in, in corruption. Praise God. But not so in the body of Christ. Say amen. Not so in the body of Christ. Say amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. It's interesting to note that Daniel is also going to be killed when the decree is Every, everyone that can't reveal the king's dream will be killed. And, and, and when he asks them to do it, uh, chapter 2, verse 10, and the Babylonians answered the king and said, There is not a man on earth who can tell the king's matter. Therefore, no king, lord, or ruler has ever asked such things of any magician or Babylonian, it is difficult what the king requests. Listen to this. And there is no other who can tell it to the king except the gods whose dwelling is not with flesh. Except the gods whose dwelling is not with flesh. That's what religion without revelation answers. We don't have the answer. And the only one that does is the gods whose dwelling is not with flesh, but I got news tonight, praise God. I got news tonight, I serve a God whose dwelling is with flesh, praise God. I serve a God who is connected to the human context, to the human situation. If you believe this, raise your hand and say glory to God. Say glory to God. Amen, amen, amen. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm myself, I apologize. I apologize to those that can't raise their hands. Amen. Amen. The Lord is good. Amen. It's so interesting. They say there is no man who can reveal this. But the king's servant in verse 25. Amen. He says to the king, I have found a man. 
praise God, of the captives of, of the captive of Judah, and he has the interpretation. What makes us distinct as the body of Christ is revelation. Say amen. What makes us distinct is we know a God whose dwelling is among flesh, the God of the incarnation. That's what distinguishes us. Praise God. That's the message we can't compromise, compromise on. Amen. Praise God. When he did this, you know the story. Amen. Immediately, he praised them. He lifted them up. Amen. He, he put them over provinces. He recognized them. I want you to know that the issue as we speak today before us as the body of Christ is an issue whether the church will have a, a historical place in the history of our society. Amen. We need a church that engages the power. Say amen. We need a church that, that, that is in tension with the powers. Uh, we need a, a, a church that says, yes, the God of heaven, no king, I can't do it. But the God of heaven, he has revealed this to me. And I praise him and I give him glory. Brothers and sisters, our distinction is that our prophetic voice is a revelation from God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And he lifted them up. And we need to, to recover that presence of God in, in history. Amen. We need to, to, to advocate for that presence of God in history. Corpus Christi, Christ in history, even Corpus Christendom, that there is a manifestation of the church in history. Now I know some of you remember the start. The, the, the church state and how it dominated history and all of the nightmares and, uh, and I agree with that but that cannot be an excuse for us to be absent from the historical process we still need the presence of the body of Christ in history we still need to be salt and light praise the Lord praise the Lord it's risky say amen it's risky praise God but we need it. We need the prophetic voice. Amen. Interacting with history. And he put them over provinces. Amen. And there uh, they governed. They were upward mobile. They did uh, many things. Amen. If they ran provinces, I guess they had to deal with budgets. Yes? I think so. Some people got an image of the three Hebrew children always praying. But if they governed provinces, they, they had to be managers. They had to be administrators. The, the, the prophetic voice was there, but they also worked within the system. They also engaged the system. In the last decades in this country has been about debates about that type of engagement. Theology of liberation in Latin America trying to change the system. Say amen. Whether you agree or not with their theology, they were trying to change their sis the system. Evangelical political activism, Jerry Falwell, Pat Robinson, they were trying to change what? Come on, help me. The system. No difference. One worshiped the ideological left. The other worshiped the Zion of the right. But they still were trying to change the system. One of my early influences Jim Wallace who's at this conference talks about prophetic politics talks about islands of hope setting up alternative uh, 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 Christian communities but it's countercultural but 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 the aim is to change what praise God engagement with the system we cannot advocate that responsibility we have to be engaged if you believe this raise your hand and say praise the Lord praise say praise the Lord we have to be engaged praise God and we have to discern how that engagement will take place the system will recognize us yes at times we had recognition tonight yes amen but interesting 
Got to be careful with that. Amen. I know this may not be popular, but we have to be careful with that. Praise God. Because the system recognized the three Hebrew children. Gave them positions of influence. Gave them positions of power. But all of a sudden, the king had a dream. And the dream was uh, that, amen, at the sound of the trumpet, at the sound of the flute, all the subjects of the system would have to bow down to the statue. He wanted unity. He wanted uniformity, not unity. He wanted unity without diversity. Say amen. And everyone had to pay loyalty to that system, to that statue, to that, to that centralization of power. And they came to him and said, you know those three Hebrew children that you recognize in Daniel, they're not bowing. Praise God. They're in the court, but they're not bowing. They're part, they're part of you, but they're not bowing. They're connected to you, but they're not bowing. You've recognized them, but they're not bowing. You've given them access, but they're not bowing. Praise God. And he summoned them. And he says, is it true that you're not bowing? Is it true that you're engaging me in a confrontational manner? Is it true that you're being prophetic? I've been good to you. I've given you access. I've given you the tools of the empire. I've let you navigate the bureaucracy. I've given you an inside track. Is it true? Praise God. Praise God. They said it's true. Read the verse. I don't have time because they gave me a time frame. But if you read the verse, if you read the verse, listen. If you read it, listen. It says, immediately when they said that, he changed their attitude toward them. That's what it says. He changed his attitude toward them. Praise God. When you engage the powers, they'll change their attitude towards you. When you confront the powers, they'll change their attitude towards you. When you're prophetic, they'll change their attitude towards you. And he said, listen, which God shall deliver you from my hands? Which God do you have that can stand up to this powerful empire that you have had the pleasure of representing? Which God? They said, let it be known to you, O king, that the God that we serve, he'll deliver us from your hand. But even if he doesn't, we're not bowing. We're not bowing. We're not bowing. Turn to the person next to you and say, we're not bowing. We're not bowing. We're not bowing. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Our loyalty is to a higher kingdom. Our loyalty is to a higher law. We're still connected. You may have given us new names, but we're still connected. We may be able to speak Babylonian, but we're still connected. We may know the language of the empire, but our loyalty is to the kingdom of God. Raise your hand and say, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. You know, um, there's consequences to saying no. Amen. When you say no, there's consequences. They, they'll change their attitude. Praise God. And the king said, listen, get, get my strong men. Read it. That's the language. And that Take my strong men and then bind them. Praise God. And then once we bind them, we're going to throw them where? We're going to throw them in the fire and heat it up seven times more. Praise God. And then we bind them. Bind them. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. They're standing up, so bind them. When you stand up, they'll try to bind you. They try to bind you. Amen. They'll try to stop the prophetic voice. I'm one of the leading advocates in the Latino community of the Faith-Based Initiative. 
We have a pilot project in New York City with uh, 20 faith-based groups, 90% of them Pentecostal and grassroots evangelicals. Don't be fooled by all that stuff that we can't handle. That's a lie. The people that are telling us that we can't handle it are the, peoples, are the people that have historically controlled the money. Praise God. Praise the Lord. And they're not people of color. I say that humbly. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. But it's accurate. Check the record. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. There, 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 there is an opportunity there. But, but the tension is, the tension is, we can't bow. Amen. I don't want to be an addendum to a White House project. Say amen. I don't want to lose my prophetic voice in the process. And you're talking to one that has been in Washington, supported it. Uh, we had John DeLulio at, at, at A.R. Bernard's church, 4,000 people, probably the biggest, one of the biggest faith-based meetings he ever went to. So I'm vice president of an organization with, with A.R. Bernard. That, so I'm supporting it. But at the same time, the price of it, the price of it cannot be the loss of our prophetic voice. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Man. They bound him. They bound him. And they threw him in the fire. And again, read the text. As they threw him in the fire, he says, we threw three in. But I, but I see them walking in the fire. And read the text. Unharmed and unbound. Praise God. Unharmed and unbound. When you stand up to power, amen, and it's done in the spirit of the prophetic voice, there's no strong man in the world that can bind you. Praise God. They'll bind you, but God will loose you. Say amen. Say amen. I threw them in. They were bound, but now I see them walking in the fire, unharmed and unbound. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I don't know how many have been in the fire because of confronting power. If you've been in the fire because you've confronted power, give me, give, give me a wave offering. Amen. Praise God. Give me a wave. If, if, if you've been in the fire because of confronting power, praise God. There are consequences in the fire, bound. But once you get in there, if it's because of prophetic integrity, if it's because of prophetic consistency, those bounds will be loosened because he said, listen, didn't we throw in three? Praise God. But I, but I see one. I see four. And, and one is like the, the, uh, the son of God. You know, church, I can't promise you that if you stand up to power, that if you confront power, that if you're more kingdom than American, say amen. That if you don't believe uh, uh, in civil religion, you know, let me, let, let me confess something. Since September 11th, I don't know about some of y'all, but I've had some tension. I, I've had 700 people at LPAC, all disasters, uh, victims. We've been working hand in hand. You know, but man, I was always on the periphery of power, speaking to power. I can't remember the last time I, I, I wore an American flag, you know? just didn't happen. I'm Puerto Rican. You don't see an American flag in the whole Puerto Rican parade. You know, all you see is Puerto Rican flags. See, uh, but all of a sudden, since September 11th, in New York, Puerto Ricans, Dominicans, uh, Costa Rica, everyone waving American flags. So I said, wow, this is something. Praise God. I put an American flag up at El Pac too. You know, because deep down inside, there was like a surge of patriotism said wow we were attacked but it was a, a feeling of tension because when you're always speaking to power from the margin amen when you don't quite feel part I don't know about y'all maybe you all already navigated and you're in there but I still feel like I'm on the periphery and you know so I kind of never celebrated that whole mainstream you know thing but all of a sudden I felt I felt threatened too I said wow you know and, and felt that tension 
you know, and I'm still dealing with. But as I prayed more, the Lord still, I don't know about you, but still spoke to me in my heart. Be prophetic, not American. Praise God. Be kingdom. Be kingdom. Have a kingdom perspective. Have a kingdom perspective. Even in this, even in this time of superficial patriotism, even in this time of, of using the American flag as a guise sometimes, amen, for false unity. In New York, they talked about all of that, that we were all one. We just went through a mayor's race. 90% of them still didn't vote for the person of color. Superficial. Not deep enough. Praise God. God is working, but not deep enough. Praise the Lord. Still issues of racism that John has fought all his life. Still issues of reconciliation. Yes, people are saying yes to cultural assimilation. They'll eat the tacos. Come on, say amen. They'll eat the rice and beans, yes? But that's cultural assimilation. That's not structural assimilation. I don't only want to be one culturally, I want to be one in the structures of power, structural assimilation, into the places of power, into the places of influence. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I'm ending, and I want to end with this. Um, in America, religion is not the question not the question. The question is historical revelation. What is God saying to us as a people? As a matter of fact, in America, any religion will do. Amen. Except the one that claims revelation and authority from God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Our, our fear is not from, like many were saying a few years ago, secular humanism. That's not the threat. The threat is New Age philosophies, neo-pagan religiosity, interfaith dialogue that reduces everything to relativism. No authority of the revealed world, word of God. So I end by saying this. We will not bow to the statue of American civil religion. We will not say America is spiritual Israel. We will not say that everything has to be looked at from a Eurocentric manifest destiny point of view. We say no to that in the name of Christ, in the name of indigenous Pentecostalism, in the name of authentic evangelicalism. We say no to that. We will not bow to that statue. But we also will not bow to the statue of a, 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 of a ecumenism that reduces our faith to one more religion at the marketplace. We will not, under the guise of interfaith dialogue, say that Jesus is not Lord. We will still proclaim before the powers, before uh, the, the symbols of, of, uh, of, of the principalities and powers of this age. We still will say that we look forward to that day when all things, praise God, will be reconciled for him. When the kingdoms of this world will become uh, the kingdoms of our Lord Jesus Christ. We look forward to a renewed world, a restored world under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. God bless you and thank you for listening.